Welcome back to the Puerto Rico 10 Ball Open, presented by Medallia Light. This afternoon's match, we have Pia Feller against Soledad Ayala. I'm here with Tim DeRyder. Looking forward to a good women's winner's, winner's side clash here. Yeah, it will be an interesting match. Um, Ayala has been playing a lot of these events lately, so I feel she's due to having a better result here and there. Yeah, they're actually pretty close in Fargo. Ayala's coming in at 6.30 and Filler's coming in at 6.90. Filler's really been showing signs of big improvement lately. Finished in the semifinals at the China Open. Final 16 of the Women's World Ten Ball Championships. Yeah, so we are playing two races to four. And if they tie one each, we'll have a deciding shootout. Early ten balls are allowed. They will make you win the game, but just not on the break. And they're playing call shot ten ball. Big break from Ayala there. Almost made the six on the side. Well, good start. Got a nice shape on the one, and maybe the position from the two to the three could be tougher. But plenty of room in the center of the table to move the cue ball at least. Yeah, if she has enough angle going to the left, she could consider going up the left side of the table as well, but looks like too much angle to the left, so middle of the table is good. Ideally, she'd want to be straight on the two so she can stay on the rail for the three. Let's see if she tries to load it up with the right here. Well, to win that match, one, two sets to zero, actually. Well, I also know she was down 3 1 in the first set and turned it around 4 3. Okay. So, also, also good signs from Ayala's side. Mm -hmm. Because if you are playing horrible, usually those kind of things don't happen. Yeah. So expect her to bank the two ball, two rails underneath the 10 and bring the cue ball two rails behind the nine. Lost the cue ball a bit. And you know, the reason why I was saying the two ball underneath the 10 was because of, yeah, sometimes it just happens to lay really nice on the combo. Now Ayala can, she can swing at this 10 and hopefully bring the cue ball back up. Yeah, cue ball is going to be coming up. It's kind of running towards the three. Maybe she can put a lot of left spin. She might be able to miss the three and come to the top left corner. Yeah. It's going to make the combo tougher, but it's kind of free, free shot here. Yeah, you have to consider two-way here because the combo is not really high percentage. Oh, she got... Actually, she got really close, and oh, the cue ball is just okay. But she played a good two-way. She played a good cue ball, even though the two didn't end up safe. Still a tough shot, and especially with the position on the three. Yeah, big distance here. Challenging positional shot. Filler looks strong over the ball. Good solid stance. Not moving much there. Yeah, she just took the medicine there. Felt like she was not gonna be on the three as good as she wants to be. Filler is the product of a full-time dedicated player. Someone that takes practice very seriously, plays in all the major events she can. Well, she has a good sparring partner she puts the time in she's not shy to travel those are all good signs eventually there's going to be something happening yeah i feel like she she has improved at least 20 fargo points in the last year and really on her way to becoming a threat a big threat in the game already is a threat in any one match Well, it's hanging in here, playing smart shots. Got her in a bad spot now. Not necessarily very difficult to hit the three. Going one rail and probably nick the three on the right side, but then still, most of the time you're gonna sell out, so not much value. 
maybe play with low and draw the cue ball around and play it firm. But then again, not so many outs. The, that was the rest there, missing it on the thin side. Yeah, like we mentioned before, getting on the three was the main thing. So now having ball in hand on this three ball, it's going to open the rack very nicely. Not sh they got to avoid a hamper queuing here, but her choice. Cue ball's moving over naturally. Just got to make sure she ends up a little bit on the high side of the six. So you can drop down for the seven and come back up again for the eight. Just a small little detail. Ooh, playing it that way, she was likely going to get on this side of the six. She'll be okay for the seven, but just going to have to move the cue ball more for the eight. Could push the eight closer to the corner pocket here to make the position on the eight a little easier. Yeah, it's not, she's not going to miss the seven from where she's going to push the eight, but the only thing in this case is if you don't judge the spin as well, you might run into the ten. Yeah, would you go all the way around and play the eight in the side? I think I would like that because I'm pretty comfortable not getting close to the 10. Like, I kind of feel this shot, but sometimes, it's what I'm saying, so some players are not too comfortable playing this kind of shot. That's a tricky roll there. I mean, you want to avoid hitting the 10, but for it to end up right in front of the cue ball is a bit of a bad roll. Tricky start here. Yeah, and especially with the last couple balls, if you hook yourself, then it's so tough to leave something difficult for your opponent. So much open space to sell out. Yeah, good hit, but the scratch was really big on that side. She got in with a couple good saves there. A couple questionable positional plays, but looks like she was going to be a force in this match. Didn't quite get the roll she needed after hitting the 10. Has to be careful though, Ayala. If she gives too many opportunities like this to Pia, she might really run away with this match because I feel also in Pia's game that whenever she gets comfortable, she starts to play very consistent. It's just when you know, she doesn't get too many opportunities and someone puts the heat on her that sometimes she doesn't get there at I the end. I agree. She's at that level that she is going to take advantage of all mistakes. And just trying to get to the level where she's able to really hang in there with the best. And she's shown she has. She had a, she had a couple good wins in Austria. Yeah. In the Women's World 10 ball. Filler is going to attack the break here. Big majority of the women are going from the side rail. Seem to be set for the men. <coughs> yeah, I think especially in the women's field, it has way more value. Just by the one ball go tracking towards the side, they don't break as powerful in general as the men. Some of them do, but not all of them. So then if you have less movement, why not just focus on making one ball? Yep. That's what I also like about this format. There's so many different ways at looking at the break. Like I spoke with Alex Pegulai and he was doing a soft break on the one, trying to make the one and leave scrappy games if he didn't make it. I stuff heard. like this. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, you have different thoughts about it. Oh, one ball got very close. Yeah, Rack got her a little bit there. Gonna be a scrappy rack here. One ball's tied, could pass towards the five. Two balls definitely surrounded and gonna be tough to access. 
I would probably look at making the one and play as safe on the two. Just try to get it as close as possible to the two ball so you open up your options a little bit more. If you can cut the two exactly between the 8-10, it's going to be a lot of coverage. Bringing the cue ball to the right. Could go bad if, you, if she hits the 8-10 on the way through, though. That's a good shot. Big wall there. Got the coverage. Or has she left the gap? The smallest window between the 8-4. I would assume it's covered. If it's covered, it's actually a really nice shot. I, I think the 6 might be in the way. Not much kicking on this. And the jump, you know, many players, they like to jump this. It's just very sensitive. Yep, got to land the cue ball properly. Anytime the ball you're jumping at is near the rail, it's a risk of jumping the rail entirely. So this must mean she's got the hook. The tricky part about this is she has to put some power into it to clear the 8 as well. Yeah, the 8 is quite far, so you have not so much room to land the cue ball. Good hit. And... Oh. That really worked out for. Yeah, landed it well there, got rewarded. Hit it in a way where she was going to create some distance. Seven ball was a bonus. Four is still going to be the key to this rack. Three is not anywhere near it, so it's going to be tough to break it out. Just thinking, she called a two in the side. She will have to put some more speed on it to really get lucky if she doesn't. Shot there. Feeler could get crazy aggressive and try the 10, but the issue with that is that the 2 is probably going to push the 8 into the 6 4. No, I'm cutting the 2 into the 8. Bring the cue ball back up. Hopefully, get the 7 in between. Yeah, just create some distance here. Containing shot. She caught it really she thick. I think she was she trying to shoot the 10. She went for the 10. I didn't mind it, but the, th the thing was it was going to open up the 4, and that's exactly what happened. Open up the 4. The 2 was going to be very wild. Yeah. And, well, if you look at the layout now, I don't really see many reasons not to run out. Just the 8. Yeah, Alan's the favorite here. Oh. That was kind of tough to hold. I feel like she'll stay with offense here, up and down. Both short yeah. rails. Good shot there. Oh, she did not play with a touch of spin and she caught it she a, caught little a little thicker. Thick. Yeah, yeah the cue ball just started tracking a little further to the left than what she wanted. I mean, it's still all right. Just wondering if she can. You think she can still bank the four ball out and then maybe press the cue ball just slowly behind the six? Like a fuller contact? It's playing into a double kiss a little bit, so I think she's going to off yeah, the she thin side of it. She's called the 10, so now I don't mind this really because you carry them into the 6, the 6 is running up to the 10, hopefully you make it. If you don't, you just send the 4 up to the 8. Yeah, creative shot. Good try. Yeah, just surprised the 4 didn't have more movement there. I, I heard you about creating distance with the 4, but it kind of just... She got a little thin as well. Yeah. Well, Filler can't cut this in. Just thin enough. Just thick enough that she's going after it. Good shot. 
I'd favor the carom here. Got to back cut the five a little bit. So already super thin on the five. Yeah, there is a big double kiss. That would be one of the reasons why I might play. I still cut the combo. I can almost guarantee she's going to undercut it. If, unless she plays it off the rail and into the ten. Good shot. No. She beat the kiss. Nice shot. 2-0. PF filler. Both players with a couple half chances in the first two racks. Filler getting the best of it. Winner of this match will advance to the, win the winner's side qualification match. All the players in the tournament right now are battling to get down to the final 16 redraw portion. Filler is also going to take place in the team event. Germany coming in as one of the favorites there. Playing with her husband Josh and Moritz Neuhausen. Yeah, solid team, especially if you consider Filler and Moritz before has won. Oh no, has finished second, second in yeah. the World Cup of Pool together. Then all of them individually have had a good year. Yeah. And they finished third in the team event last year. Thorson was on the team, actually. But Josh and Pia have experience playing together and doing well. Argentina doesn't have a team in the tournament. Alejandro Carvajal is from Argentina. Probably just short on another strong male player to form out the team. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with most of the South American players. Unless the, the usual suspects like Jesus Atencio, Gerson Martinez, you know, like... That I know some, but not too many of them. Yeah, they're, they're an emerging constant, for sure. I feel that actually pool is growing there as well. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I mean, the, the history of the game down there was more three-cushion, but I think pool is overtaking three-cushion as being more popular. It's just a question of developing some real world-class players, and it'll happen. Yeah, eventually, nowadays, it's easier to learn how to play pool. There's more knowledge out there. Mm -hmm. As long as they start young enough, usually, they get really far into this world. Cut the one a little bit more, and she put, probably accidentally, she put left spin, which is gonna turn the one lower in this case. Yeah, better spread overall. We have to see if the six passes the 10. Don't think it does. Might be able to play it in the side, but the five isn't really in a great spot to be able to stop the cue ball. She could get the cue ball over by the eight. Get that angle on the five. Tough opener, though. Don't think she's left the one. No. We'll have a couple safeties. She'd like to stop the cue ball behind the five, but if she hits it on that angle, the one's going to hit the two and not get, on, get in the proper area to get the... Well, she could take the risk, right? Play the one into the two, but then with some pace mm -hmm. to still move it out. She could two rail bank the one underneath the six ten and bring the cue ball back up. I was thinking about this shot. Th too. This uh, this line, but then I would probably like it to play double speed, more distance. Yeah. yeah, and also make sure the one is to that point on the short rail where you cannot sell out at least. Even if you don't get the hook, it's not in the open. She has enough of it to attack here. I was wondering if she can leave us an angle on the two to run into the six ten and have the three as well. It's a good shot. It would open up the whole rack and you will only have to play one more difficult shot on the three after. That's it. it it's more risk probably, but going for the run out and not moving them is also risky. There's a small possibility that the six passes. We'd have to get a different angle on that. She's looking at the rack. She's not too worried. She might just be playing the 
maybe so. maybe she feels like she can get to the short side of the five and if she gets straight then you have the six in the side maybe maybe that's what she's looking for kind of looking down the right side of the table here so and the angle she left herself on the four plays into that well of course if the six goes to the bottom left yeah she was gonna leave herself this natural angle yeah Could slow roll this or could hit it with more pace and try to run into the seven. I feel like running into the seven is kind of a better play because if you get on top of the six, going forward with the cue ball, could run into the ten. She did. It's a good shot. Great shot. Very nice. Yeah, especially that second bump helped her out. So this must mean it goes. Yeah, that's the good news. Yeah, <laughs> she's definitely playing it in here. Cue ball, hopefully, is running for her. Is running on top of the eight. Have to stun it. Good control shot there. Impressive stuff from Ayala. Stuck in the score line, but can tell that she's improved and playing well. Well, she's been getting tough layouts as well. And then just towards the end of the wreck, this happens. Yeah, that. She got a little further on the seven than I feel she could have been. Of course, closer to your work is easier. Yeah, kind of an odd rattle there. It looked like she hit it decent, but the speed was just a little too high and just kind of finishing the stroke, getting that solid rotation on the object ball kind of hurt her there. I'm not short here. And this happens very often playing that kind of shot. Just because of the slide of the cloth, it just, especially if you hit the ball thick, wants to keep going forward. Layup safe with the eight to the short rail here. Pretty well. I'm gonna leave an edge at best, which isn't really gonna help Ayala. Might just have to go thinly off the right side of it. If she does hit it real thin, she has a chance with the cue ball going in the right off the eight and lining up the eight with the ten. Very tough though. The good thing is, if, if she hits the 8, it's well, I was going to say, there is only one bad scenario, and it's catching it too thick. Yeah, which it didn't even look like she could hit it that thick, but... I, I like what she tried to do. I don't think there was anything else. Yeah. It's just you have to feather it, and some players really like to play this kind of shot, and some are just not that experienced playing this. It's tough from distance. If you're closer to the ball, it's a pretty executable shot, but from distance like that, anyone can make that mistake. But just for the amateur players out there, like getting used to hitting safes real thin is a really big skill. A lot of people are afraid to miss the whole ball or just not used to aiming at very thin parts of the ball, but it's a big skill because it creates, it naturally creates a lot of distance between to go up 3-0 here. She'll be breaking on the hill. Not successful in her first two breaks. See if she can figure that out in the third one. Yeah, she's on the hill. First set, Pia Filler. Josh is watching on in the crowd there. Always. Doing well so far in the men's event. Won his first two rounds. Yeah, 
actually interesting fact is during this match, Pia has been at the table for 37 percent. Interesting. Just showing that Ayala with 63 percent, showing that she's doing all the hard work, and then Pia picking up the pieces at the end. Kind of getting the first look in the racks, shooting the majority of the balls. Yeah. And I already felt like this because it looks like she's running pretty decent, you know, six, seven balls an inning. Like people, if they leave the five in the open, she would run out. It's just that from the one with all the difficult positions and everything, at some point she just doesn't get there. Breaking down a little bit. Yeah. Fellow breaking, 3-0. Let's see if she can make the one on the break. Made the three this time, though. Yeah, I think she can make the one. Just follow. She won't be able to get straight on the two, but you don't really have to. Yeah. You it just don't get on top of the nine. Anywhere that's that area around the nine would be pretty good. It's naturally tracking to the left a little bit, so she'll have reasonable position on the popping here. Having a good look at the angle, doing her pre-shot routine. Visualizing the pot. Well, she went double speed and hit it well. Couldn't nice hit it any better. So now has two options. Could play top left and go like bump the short rail and come out. Other players like to stun and make sure they have something on the four. The only risk playing that shot is if you under hit it, you leave yourself an annoying cut. If you play two rails, you're guaranteed to have something on the four. Looks like she's gonna go for the slowest pocket weight speed here, load it up with right, make the angle a little longer, try to hold for the five. Not there. Yeah, I didn't feel that shot that well. It's so tough. The the cut is gonna leave so much speed on the cue ball. Yeah, I had to catch it thickly and had to catch it at the slowest speed possible to pocket it. Tough shot. Another shot she could have played. I just seen it is play the same way but run into the five. Right. I think that would be. Best chance now. Nothing. Nothing easy. She has left the bank if she wants to go aggressive. I wouldn't mind going for the bank, especially being down 3-0. You know, try to make something happen. I think this is a spot where the score line kind of dicta dictates the shot, and I think she has to attack here. Has to make something happen. Cue ball is going to be running towards the 7-8, but would be unlucky to get right behind one of them. Try to draw under the eight as well. And a nice shot. Seven passes into the bottom left. Just gonna have to draw over to the right side of the table here. Taking a look at that angle right now. Yeah, if she gets to where she's now, that would be ideal. Perfect. Good stroke there. Maybe a little bit short, but still she can draw into the rail and come back out. There's yeah, those draw strokes are where you're drawing the cue ball about a foot can be a little tough if you're not confident. Best players make it look easy. She plays well. Nice, nice long stroke. Times the ball well. Loose action. She did get a little bit straighter on the eight, so I would almost feel like I'd played top spin a little bit more speed and come off the short rail unless you want to shoot the nine when yeah at from the rail you know that's the, that was a tricky thing ending up on the long rail yeah shots like that you just got to make sure you get right to the top of the cue ball any kind of thick contact on the object ball any kind of follow where you're hitting more speed it's got to really hit the top of the cue ball to maintain the solid forward motion
good look at her first game win here. This rack from Ayala. Capitalizing on the positional error from Filler. But this is exactly what the, what the statistics were saying, right? She does. She is running five, six, seven balls all the time. It's just at the end she's been giving it a little bit. She, if she gets a couple opportunities like she just got. She's I, capable. I, yeah. yeah, she is definitely capable and looking to be playing good enough to to get it done. Mm -hmm. So. Opportunities came at the end of the rack instead of the beginning of the rack this time. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like she can get through the whole rack as well. So going to have a good match on her hands here still. Christine to catch is up 2-1 on Margaret Fefalova. That's kind of the marquee matchup in this round. All the other seated women in action as well. Jasmine Ocean starting off with her first match of the tournament. Yeah, also today we have the World Team Championship starting. Some extra play for all the players. And I, li I like those combos too, to where you travel and you get to play in two, maybe three events instead of just flying 12 hours, having a 30 hour trip, and then play one tournament, maybe play bad, and Losing go back in home. a single knockout or something. Yeah, yeah or, or playing good and you lose Hill Hill in, in, the, in, in last 16, for example. Just, well, nice break. She had a break like this before in the match. Yeah, she hits them hard, getting good action out of the rack. I would guess the five ball is a little tricky. Not sure if the five would go off the eight in the side. If he wanted to get really ambitious here, he could try to run the cue ball into the eight right now. Tough though, kind of a stun follow type hit. Yeah, and if you catch the eight full, the three could be in a very awkward spot, so. I think the five can play off the eight. I feel like the eight's a little past the, the eight side is a little bit, yeah. The yeah. From that view we just got, it looked like it didn't go. Yeah, sometimes you're able to do something, and the other times you just know, okay, I have to play a good shot from the four to the five. Like now, I would be telling myself, rather be too short on the five than go too far and get behind the eight. Yeah, I think one rail is the play here. Typically, if the eight wasn't there, you'd play two rails, but she's trying to come across one rail here. She's done pretty well. She's got perfect. That's good enough, yeah. Gonna have to run the cue ball across table. Cue ball's kind of tracking towards the side and towards the nine, but she could try to play the cue ball a little bit inside the nine. Well, I was thinking, what about she plays with just a hair of right inside spin? And track over for the six in the right side bucket. This one. this way you have so much room to maneuver in. The only thing you gotta make sure is you get some angle to come back up for the seven. That's it's, it's still tricky. The work is not done yet. Caught it a little bit wide, and also if you look at the cue ball, I was thinking about playing it. Probably double speed, tracking off the long rail, a little bit more inside. And it's the same thing, like it's not like she's played bad shots, she played a couple good positions, she runs a couple balls and then... It's just, it, it's the showcase of how tough it is to really get through a full 10 ball rack, right? And you know, yeah. the, the best men in the world kind of make it look easy in spots, but you're going to have to execute through. Generally, you're going to have to execute three or four good shots. And, you know, she's right there, but just not quite getting over the finish line to run the whole rack. Surprise, she's going jacked up. She <laughs> really turned out great on this six. Yeah, I felt like 
I, I think she thought if she followed it, she'd be on the wrong side of the six. So that was actually a pretty good shot there. Got the angle to fall through to the long rail here. Come off the long rail and towards the seven. Could oh, it's, it's, it's either that or stunned to the right side of the nine. Yeah, you could punch it as well. Maybe a little safer. Did find a nine. Caught it on the on the right side, on the good side. Now again, you don't have to try and get straight on the eight. Like that, then you can actually miss the seven if you just make the seven and leave a little bit more cut. She'll be able to slow it down here. Can play some right spin if she feels like it. So had more energy in the cue ball. Might have been trying to play the corner regardless. Felt like she couldn't hold it enough to play for the side. So one good shot. This could earn her first set. Oh, she's lost the cue ball. Yeah, just focused on the pot too much last minute. Kind of in a surprising position with the cue ball there. And this is a very missable. Yeah. Distance from the side. Pretty sharp. Did you call it corner? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just probably because of the corner plays a little bigger. Yeah. Ro rolling this to the side is very scary. I don't think it's there, no. Opening for Ayala here. And especially, you know, I've seen this happen many times. This could turn around completely if it keeps going this way. Yeah, the race, I mean, she's within one game. And, and now, you know, Filler's battling mentally in a spot where she was looking at winning the set pretty easily. And has to get right back into the fire here. So it's not 4-1, be a Filler, but 3-2. Yeah. Yeah, it's my first time seeing Ayala play. I actually, I like how she plays. Yeah, pretty smooth swing as well. Mm -hmm. Not too jabby. Took an aggressive shot on the 10 there. Hit, hit the ball with authority. Yeah. Seems pretty, pretty calm emotionally. Special equipment for the ProBit series, the Predator Apex 9-foot table in action. Predator Arrow Rack, Arcos 2 balls. Also a Predator sponsored player, both actually are Predator sponsored players. Get as much action but before Railer went. Yeah, she does put quite a bit into the break. It yeah, was it wasn't pretty decent timing. Yeah, it wasn't as obvious there because she cut it so much, so it didn't get a lot of energy into the middle of the rack. But when she hits it square, it, she's got good speed. So now I might like cutting the one into the seven and bring the cue ball two rails. Hopefully bump the 10 and sti stick the cue ball behind the 3-4. Not a lot else. Could try to bank the one in between the 2-4 as well. She went around the angles. Couple That's balls good to get behind. I think she's got it. Yeah. And... There's just one kick. Wondering myself, 
does it have enough value to kick over the right side? Because there's no other ball in the top side of the table. Yeah, she's going to jump at it here and try to stop the cue ball with the 7. Yeah, if, if the 1 catches the 9 or the 10, you have a big chance of getting lucky. Not this kind of lucky. Tied up three, but possibly lined up a combo. Going to be kind of tough to keep the cue ball on the right side of the table after she plays the two. Tough shot here, but I don't mind drawing straight out. Just trying to get perfect on the two. Rail first and around. Good shot as well. Oh, she almost <laughs> missed it. I was going to say, how could, that's a tough ball to miss. But looked like it could hang up for a second. If there's a 3-9 combo, I understand her. I, I will understand that she keeps going for the run out. I really wouldn't mind just banking the two out and running the cue ball in the 10 and play safe. Just to make it a little bit more moving. Draw that ball more to make sure she's going to get on the three there. Yes. Yeah, or s knowing that she was going to run into the temp, play with inside spin and come off short rail, long rail back up. It's got an outside chance of making the combo here. Nine. She hits the left side of the three. Playing the three to the right way to make the nine. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just unfortunate with how the three ends up, but nice recovery. In a better spot than she was one shot ago. Yeah, really unfortunate. There's not many options she can play here. Everything's on a rail and so close to, to a rail, it's hard to hide the cue ball behind any of them. Definitely needs an extension. I still don't really see a shot here. You could try to it play off the right side of the three and play the three over to the right short think it's rail. Depending if she can Long rail cut part. the three out without touching the four. Or just play conservative. And yeah, I think that was the only shot. Would have been nice if she got an over ball there, but she did okay. Yeah, just hang in there. There is an aggressive shot if she wants to go. She can cut the three. And yeah, she called a corner. She's going aggressive here. High reward, but could also be very dangerous. She's missed a similar shot on the 10 like this before. Pretty much all in for the rack here. And for the set. Oh, and she's missed it as well. And that was one of the risks, like knowing you will have to play that speed. You are going to leave something on the three if you don't make it. And now it's only it takes one shot and then Ayala has the same opportunity to make it hill hill in this first set. Only possible savior for fillers. The cue ball ended up on the rail here. She's going to have to elevate, really elevate up if she wants to draw the cue ball back past the six. I'm just wondering what about you get on top of the six? I'm going to take a more cut on the four. Such a tough shot when you're elevated like that. In between spot, it was either kind of play the more easier position and take a tougher shot on the four or play the tougher position and go for the easier shot. But Filler's got a great chance here. A lot of all the balls close to pockets. Pretty naturally into each other. Extension. A little worried about the cue ball tracking too far to the right here. She starts drawing it. She runs the risk of running into the seven, so she might have to follow it with a fair bit of left. Keep it on the left side of the table. Gonna go for the draw. This is okay too. Just gonna watch out for the seven here. now maybe 
maintain the angle going up table here. Yeah, j everything but straight on the seven. Yeah, just need if you get a little bit closer to go to the eight, that would be nice. So entertaining first set, competitive first set. Filler, big favorite to take it. We'll look for another comeback attempt from Ayala in the second set. Get off the rail. You don't want to get stuck to the rail on this. Yeah, nicely done. Pia Feller wins the first set, 4-2. Or at least you will expect her to make this. We have a pretty good chance. <laughs> so, 4-2, Pia Feller. Yeah, started breaking in the first set, so that would mean Ayala has to break in the second. Could be wrong. Looks like Pia has got her break you out. So yeah, Soledad had the first break. I remember by how hard she hit it, pressed me right off the first break. No, it was Ayala on the first break. Yeah, yeah. she made a ball and got shape on the one. So Pia with the second break or the first break in the second set. Winner of this match will play Wing Su Chen. It's going to be the favorite in the bracket underneath them. on the marquee match of the round. Christina to catch and Margaret Feffelover are tied at two in the first set. A little bit of a battle going on there. Yeah, strong field as always. Lately, I feel the women's tour has been progressing a lot. Definitely. A lot of good players coming out, starting to travel again. Compete again. Coming to the point where there's 16 to 20 players that could win the tournament. Nice square hit. Yeah. One yeah. of her better breaks, I feel. Oh yeah. If you look at the spread, perfect spread, just nothing finding the pocket. Couple windows on both sides of the table, but at the same time. Decent amount of blockers. Should be able to find cover here. Played that well. Tight enough that she eliminated the jump. One ball is nice in the middle of the table. Actually possible to miss these kicks when the ball is so far from any of the rails. Well, also, the rails are still sliding. Arcadia cloth doesn't really wear out fast, so always have to judge the little slide of the rail. So depending on the speed, the slide gets more or less. She's going over the short rail. Will have less slide than she expected well, to probably. Yeah. Just any time the ball you're kicking at is far from any of the rails, it's, you know, it's a difficult judgment. The four passes the six. She's in a decent yeah. spot to run out here. I think it does. And what I was wondering, if you take the 1-5 combo now, you get straight on the 3 to the side, straight on the 4 stop shot, and then you have the 6. If you take the 5, if you leave the 5, then you have to draw a little bit back on the 4, you have to get more perfect on the 4. She seems to be liking to leave the 5 there. Got a bit of an angle. Uh, she's straight now. She can come straight back. 
Four definitely does pass the six we saw from that angle there. Is a typical layout you don't really get to see very often playing rotation because usually you try to play big angles, pocket speed, and now this is more of an eight ball layout for me where you're trying to leave yourself straight most of the time. Stop shots for over half the rack. Yeah. She's got nice, now she'll have to draw back half a diamond, get as straight as possible on the five, then you can float in the six. Float in the seven, like it lays pretty good from here. Yeah. Just to work around the four, five, six. Perfect. So she she's been killing really good. Like it's I don't feel she's been. Yeah, I feel missing like balls like really d easy ones or something like. Yeah, no, I feel like her ability is higher than her Fargo, and I feel like she's a player on on a, with a big upside. Yeah. She just has to get comfortable in big spots, and she, she's looking comfortable. Yeah, maybe a couple small choices, like p position wise, maybe, but we all learn every day still, so. Sure. Stroke is there. Mental makeup is there. have too much angle where she has to play into the short rail but she'll be okay either way yeah can maybe still kill it tricky thing with the short rail is the tip position most of the time and just the only thing she did not want to do to get to the eight was trying to get straight straight She's got a small angle, can draw along the long rail. Nine in the side. Two or three ar rails around for the ten in the same pocket. If she gets straighter, she's put a ten across to the other side pocket. It's pretty long to reach even with an extension, but She's going to go extension and bridge. Yeah, the bridge, who is not everybody's favorite to use. Most of the players quite struggle using the bridge. Good position here, though, anchoring it well. Nice stroke. Under hit it a bit, but should be fine. Keep all just moving to the right. Play it back around two rails. Yeah, I think I would put quite some spin on this right and make sure I softly bump the second rail. That's what I would be going for, not trying to hold the cue ball or trying to play double speed, just just enough to come off the second rail softly. Finesse it a little more, yeah. Yeah, just like that. As long as you play that soft bump, you were never going to get something extremely difficult. To open her account here in the second set, yeah. Ayala Soledad. Good rack from Ayala to her first full rack round of the match. Very nice. Yeah, nice run out. She made it look a lot easier than this was. She really needed some good cue ball work maneuvering around the balls. And a round of applause in the background there from the league event that's happening. Around 700 players participating in the CSI league event here this week. It's a great venue. If you ever want to take a little vacation, this will be the place to go. Yeah, also the the whole CSI experience has been still growing. Every year we have more players. So far I know all the locations, not just here, but also Michigan, Wisconsin, Vegas. I might be missing one or two, but 
almost everywhere I go, I hear that there's more players, more people traveling as well to all the state championships. Yeah, it's a good time, and, and the added bonus is that you get to watch these world-class players participate as well. Yeah, close making the nine. Look at how open the balls are again. Yeah, she really hit that one well, actually, to the point where she popped the cue ball, and I like how she hit it, crossed it over just a little bit, left an open rack. So two rails up and down. Then again, try to bump the second rail to make sure you can get a nice angle on the two ball. If you play, you, most of the time when you play this one rail, you end up either straight on the two or behind the eight because you, if you catch it thinner or thicker, it's going to change where the cue ball is ending up. That's why she's using two rails on that. Now center of the table. She chose to get straight on the three, which is not horrendous, but she will have to play good speed to get to the center of the table. The six comes into play, or the five comes into play. She had some kind of look over at the four nine combo, but I think she was just considering it. She's, she's going to draw this ball. Good control there. Yep, good speed. Now I do like to play the five in the top left, I do just well. to bump the right long rail, come into the line of the shot. Yeah, key for that one is you're playing into the angle of position. Always something you want to look for, and something you should feel confident playing when you recognize it. Good hit. In good line now. Yeah, probably. Top shot on the five would already be enough to move the cue ball over maybe a diamond or two from the six to the seven. Well, both ladies made some mistakes in the first set. Showing good form but making some maybe silly mistakes. Yep. But it's good to see that both of them actually are stepping it up now. Like it's they are now starting to run out back and forth. Yeah, they're getting they're getting right into the match now. <coughs> Showing their real skill here. Eight in the top left corner, nine ball hanging over the bucket, so as long as she gets anywhere close on the eight should be fine. Miller hasn't really got the break going in this match. Hit the last one nice and square. Don't feel like she has the big power that some other players have. But just looking for certain contact points that are to give her a chance to make the one on the side. So far, nice run out, one each. Top prize in the women's event is 22,000. Up a little bit from last year. The men are playing for 37,000 first prize. Team event is 120,000 first prize. A lot of prize money on offer this week. 500,000 total. Defending champion on the women's side is Wei Tzu Chen. Francesca Centeno, second runner up. Carlo Beato won the men's side. Runner up, Daniel Masio.
Filler sticking to the right side of the table here. I feel she's been breaking from the same side. Don't think changing sides here is going to change the result, really. Usually it does change a little bit, but in this case, the one is going to be tracking towards the side. It's just the right combination of spin and speed and the contact point. There it is. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Now it needs the two ball to stay. It didn't stay. Of course, it's nice to make two balls, but would have liked to have the two ball hanging over the pocket, of course. Yeah, three's makeable here. Four is right in front of the pocket, so if she makes it, she's almost guaranteed position. Yeah, top right. I think I'm gonna go in between the seven nine and come back out. Yeah, make this get decent on the four, and then it's maintaining angles. Oh, did that seven ball get her? Worst case, she'll have to go rail first, but yeah, a little unlucky to end up behind the seven here. Well, and also rail first, she could be running into the five. Like there was, you're not guaranteed to. A lot tougher to control the cue ball. Yeah. Here. Looks like she's going real first. Half ball, maybe a little thinner would be great. Didn't run into the five. Call it just a hair too thick or too thin, depending if she wanted to go around the five. But based on the speed she played, I don't think she played that. Safes are actually tough here. Tough to get the cue ball exactly between the eight nine. Tough to control the five ball between the eight nine. Could kick the five down table. Yeah, you could bank it two rails towards the ten. I'm. I think I'm swinging. You could. I might bank at this. I feel like it's playing a little long, but if you power draw it, put a lot of speed into it, you got a chance to shorten it up. Or is she going to cut the five straight down in between the nine eight down to the short rail? Oh, she caught it thick. Tough shot. So half chance for Ayala here. Yeah, make the five with top spin. You either run into the nine, or if you don't run into the nine, you're Gonna be even better on the six. Yeah, ideally you'd want to play between the seven nine. Seven nine? Eight nine. Nah, I think it's going forward a little bit, but you might be right, might be going on top of it. I just feel like I don't wanna go towards the seven. Because of this oh. she actually she struck it nice. That's the if she catches it a little thinner, she's still good on the six. Like it, yeah, she it really turned out horrible. Yeah, she knew she was running towards trouble there and just had to take a small gamble, and it didn't turn out for her. Big spot in the match, really. Both players playing well. I call the six in the bottom left corner. I feel there was not so much safety involved in that. It's great if you make it, but if you don't make it, could be very bad news. Seven's gonna get in the way of the cue ball in the, in the six, but she's made the nine, so Filler has the option to put her back in. Does she barely have enough of it here? She's looking confident. Well, the thing is, if you know it's just a very small messe, do you want to give it back? That's the, it's that almost a 50-50 proposition then, but she has enough of it. I think it goes, yeah. yeah. Good speed, perfect angle on the seven to stun over into the bottom long rail softly. Stroke there. 
Taylor's looking very compact fundamentally. Not only with her stance, but stroke delivery. I think for her, as we were saying earlier, it's just being able to break through and beat that real upper, upper echelon of Ooh. players. Surprisingness there. Yeah, giving away the lead in the second set. Yeah. Can you give Ayala you know, confidence here? She's been playing well, and if she can get out to a lead, you can see her getting over the, being able to get over the finish line. Well, of course, from this position, Pia also knows that she's guaranteed to either go to a shootout or win the match. Sure. So I'm sure she won't be thinking about, oh, this way I'm going to lose. Mm -hmm. But of course, everybody's trying to <laughs> avoid a shootout because th from there it really starts to be a coin flip. Yeah, one miss and that could be it. Yeah, 2-1. Soledad Ayala from Argentina. On the other TV table, we have Alison Fisher and April Larson. April Larson who will be competing this week in the World Team Championship alongside Shane Van Boning and Tyler Steyer. Yeah, she's gonna be a big X, X factor for the American team. Well, it's good to see her travel a little bit more again. She disappeared for quite a while, like she does that. But then again, that's what most of the pool players do at times, so yeah. <laughs> nothing new. Okay, I know she's done a lot of grassroots sponsorship, and she's working at a pool room now, so just getting the financial side straight. Hit it off square, but ended up making one. This girl's it's not afraid to fire, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Just very surprised that she went to the center, even though she was making most of the breaks of all. Because she was actually, yeah, hitting it well from the side round. But, but maybe she just felt like everything turned out to be so scrappy from the side that she was like, okay, just let's wing at it from the center and hopefully it opens up nice. But if you look at it, it didn't really didn't hit square enough to actually get yeah. the separation she wanted. At least she keeps the initiative every time by making the ball on the break. Yep. Now again, there is such a big wall with the 4, 8, 7, 10, 3, 6. But you have, to, you have to take this. You can never turn this down. Yeah, they're going to be playing around that wall for a few shots here. Oh, she caught it really thick. Now, it looked to me that she moved a little bit on the shot. She pushed a little bit forward. And usually when you have that forward movement, you start to hit balls too thick. Yeah, you always want to minimize body movement. Going to take a shot at the cross bank here. Not much reward, but... Well, you can bring the cue ball two reels underneath the three. If you don't get nicely on the three, you play safe on the three. Yeah, smart shot there. She was playing mainly just cue ball. Would have been great if she tied it closer to the three six. This way, she was always going to get the jump cue out. She's called a cross corner bank, so jump cross corner bank. There yeah. is a kiss, double kiss. She catches it a little bit thicker with left. She caught it really thin. But I think, yeah, she hasn't left it. She can get through to it. Question if she can hit it off the left side to pocket it. Now, if you feel you won't be able to get from that one ball to the three then play the same shot they've been playing all the time bank it over get the cue ball down yeah, 
she really tried to get to the bottom side of the tree and believe it or not sometimes the best move you can do is put the one ball in front of the pocket and say hey please you start yeah the three is <laughs> just in a weird spot here they've both been trying to gain the advantage or get at it for a few shots like that, that, how is she gonna get to the three i don't think there's a combo on the 10. i'm trying to blast this and try to make something happen Oh. She might have just an edge, but where is she going to go? Yeah. If she does have that right edge, she can cut it thinly and play the three down to the short rail and use the 7-10 as blockers. Yeah, if she can hit it just thick enough. Favoring the eight more there. I didn't mind favoring the seven ten. Play the cue ball behind the five. Play the three over near the five. Might have come up short here. Might have left the left edge. Bit of an early mistake in this rack. Once there's an opening on the three, it's still going to be tough to get on the five. They'll both be looking at getting a, an angle on the five where they can play a real lockup safe behind the nine. Good shot there. Under in a pretty tough spot here. So tough that you might choose to tie something up. Especially because of where the three is as well. Three is kind of in a safe spot. Just going to go for the quick jump here. Shot's tougher than it looks. No, no jump. Oh, no, just no. switching cues. Uh, which I completely understand. You have to elevate a lot on the jump. You have to land right on top of the three. I might tie something together. Maybe the five nine. Cut the five really thin and send it towards the nine. Six into the seven, maybe even. Looks like she's going for the kick. This kick is tough. I don't mind it at all. The only thing I do mind is putting the five next to the nine is always going to have the three in the open. Now with the nine next to the three, Pia is probably going to thin the three behind the nine and probably get the cue ball in between the seven ten and now you're locked. Mm -hmm. So I do like the fact that she tried to take intentional foul. Just don't. I'm not feeling the fact that she put the nine just right next to the three. It's kind of like the five was already tied up too, right? So just kind of maybe even tie up two spots there instead of yeah. opening up one and taking a chance at tying the other one up. She did get the hook. She didn't really do much with the cue ball, I feel. Yeah, she ran out of time, just trying to make it was trying to make a quick decision there, but got down to the end of her shot clock and had to execute something. She did cover it. There is a couple shots she can play. Long reel, short reel into the three, or short reel, long reel with right spin. This way, the ball is smaller, but if you hit it, you get better reward. I like the first shot you called. It's very tough to judge that one, one reel. But then still, it's not. You know, she... At least tied again. up the five again. That's that was huge. It's on two fouls now, though. And Filler can nestle this three, kind of beside the five. Ideally, oh, I don't. I'm just wondering where are you gonna go with the three? I would try. I would try to play the three more safe. Oh, you mean if you play it this way? Yeah. yeah if it, it how she's playing it, like Extension. maybe get the three underneath the five nine. That's that's what I was thinking, and then play the cue ball behind the six. Yeah, she can get her here. I, I mean, if she, if she really puts the kill line between the nine and the five, then sure, it's already going to be tough to hit the three. But yeah. I feel the three is going to be more in the open playing the shot. Yeah, ideally, there she goes. She's seen the other shot now. If you get, I feel like she needs more angle, though. I I know she needs more angle. She's down to ten the end seconds. Of her shot clock. Yeah. She just, she knew what she wanted to do there. She just 
couldn't make the decision in time with the shot clock and had to kind of give up an easier safe than your own two. Okay, you will have to favor Ayala to make this because if she kicks over the right short rail, there's such a big incoming angle, like it's a big ball to hit. It's a window between the seven oh, ten. Oh wow, Hard really? To believe she caught the window there. Oh, you cannot believe this. She played a pretty good shot. I think she's got the hook and she's opened up the five. That's yeah, a reversal of fortunes here but for sure. <laughs> I mean How did she leave a window? Ah, it's just unlucky. I mean, it was one thing not to get a solid hook out of it, but to leave a window is really unlucky there. Yeah, anything safe. You, you know your opponent is on two. Anything safe is all right. Yeah. Well, she's left open shot on the three. Ayala's finally going to get a break here after a lot of safety play. Sometimes tough to step up and pocket a ball after playing safe for so many shots, but we'll see if she's up to the challenge here. Let's see if she's playing low left. Pocket speed, bring the cue ball to the center of the table, or she's just gonna make the three and go two rails and take a longer four. This is more sensitive, but comes with a higher reward, and she's got pretty good on the four. Maybe yeah. a little straight, but the five looked like it did go. As long as she's straight in, she'll be okay to get over the left side of the table. She's gonna have to power up a little bit. Quite straight enough, so she's gonna fall through two rails. Nice stroke there. She hits those kind of shots very pure. I like how she hits like the really, ball. really smooth, yeah. and she doesn't really put that pop on there. Like it just naturally moves forward. Good finesse. Yeah. Good timing in the stroke. Now I'm thinking probably draw back. Two balls back. Oh, was she, was she doubting if it would go? It could have been that and almost maybe like half indecisive on the position. Didn't leave a pocketing angle for filler here. Saves are actually not that easy as well. Or does it go to the corner? She's it might, yeah. she's elevated here, so must be. No. Safety. Smart shot. But another window. Wow, he's not catching the benefit of the getting right behind a ball, getting right behind certain balls here. I think she's also trying to get behind the six. Just the spin on the sliding club doesn't really grab that much. Here we have Joshua Filler. The hubby. Those are really tough shots with the shot clock running out, so she might play. Great. Wow. Great stroke I mean there. Not going to end up as she wanted on the six, but even to pocket that ball. I was going to say, if I'm running out of time, I, I might play safe on that. You know, just yeah. thinning the ball and bringing the cue ball back down. Now, can she go in between the seven and the ten, kick the six from the bottom short rail, kick the six up and leave the cue ball behind the seven? The only thing I would have liked to kick this with top spin. She hit pretty low in the cue ball. The top spin after contacting the rail is gonna turn into yeah, stop shot or draw spin kinda. And she did make the six in a different pocket. Yeah, maybe a bit of a small missed opp opportunity on a low percentage call there. Could yeah, she could have called it just in case, yeah. And this seven goes. Big turnaround in events, I feel. Yeah. Could be, could have been easily 3-1 either side. Or could be coming 3-1 either side. Play the eight and the nine in the same corner. Just make sure you don't get stuck on the rail. Play double speed, longer nine. We'll have to do more with the cue ball as well, choosing this shot instead of making the eight and the nine in the same corner. Yeah, drawing angle's not perfect, so I feel like she might stay on the right side of the table here. Play a little bit of right spin on it. Could stop Maybe just left top spin. 
one wheel down. She played with inside and she is gonna end up on the rail. To level the score to each, be a filler. to each scraping through this second set yeah. I feel Ayala is taking the upper hand in this second set making long shots tough positions just small details long rack there Ayala is actually going for a tip change or a shaft change looks mm -hmm. like just is that her jump cue and looks is there a jump cue oh she probably she was opting to maybe jump a ball during this long rack and then took her extension off, or like she was She's not happy with her jump equipment exactly. She didn't jump. No, yeah, she was gonna jump the three. I remember. And then she last second put it down, and because she took her extension off to play the short jump, then she kicked at it, yeah. About a 10 minute rack there, a lot of fighting going on. Our official sponsors, the Puerto Rico Tourism Company, District Puerto Rico popular and of course we have Kamui predator group with all the equipment Medaya Light official sponsor of the whole event here Filler got the one on the side on her last break and looking to duplicate that here the last one she actually hit really square, that's when it goes. That's the sensitive part about this. If you don't hit it square in the face, then you cannot ex expect to make the one. I was gonna say, of course she hits it right in the face, but she's not crushing the break either, like Ayala is doing. Not a lot of power. Yeah, that's why the one uh, most of the time is coming very low. She still made the four, and she can either play for a shape on the two, or if she doesn't get there, still play safe. Yeah, she could play safe on the one ball as well if she feels like she won't be able to make the ball and spin the cue ball down. I like being offensive here. I, I like playing this with a bit, bit of left spin. Try to stay on the right side of the table. Yeah. Get to the short side of the two. Yeah, top left for sure. I like it. And if you come up too short, you still have easy safe on the two. Tough more defensive approach. Oh, and elevating over the two seven. This one ball is horrible. Yeah, tough to pocket even if you're queuing level. Forced to elevate now. Might be able to get into the right side of the cue ball, which actually helps with pocketing here. See how level she can get at it. on the one, shot clock running down. Didn't quite where she get it where she wanted on the two. She's caught the right side of it. Definitely worried about the double kiss coming off the short rail of the cue ball. Looks like the eight might actually be blocked on the right side, so she's gonna have to go all in on a kick here. Getting short on time again. Right. 
two goes to the side. I feel like there's enough value in trying to stay with offense here. 5-9 is going to be the next roadblock for her. I mean, I understand that she can go offensive here, but I really like her playing the safe. Just wait till Ayala maybe kicks at it, doesn't hit it, and then opens up the 9-5, you know, then you can really get going. Chance of that happening, yeah. Or a chance of getting the ball in hand on the two where he can actually open up the five off the two. Yeah, depending where the two ball ends up or if the cue ball scratches. There's many things. Need to five. Both yeah, there. Combo is too tough Four there, so it's a safe Indeed. option. Tough layout here. Seven's only going to be available to the top left. Six actually lies in good position for that. I don't mind playing the bank. Yeah. Don't make the bank. It's going to track to underneath the six. Always going to have something on the three. This is it's a good shot. Just, I think she might have left an edge, but now this is exactly one of the reasons why Pia played the safe earlier. Now with the two ball, the nine or the five is gonna move, guaranteed. She's gonna open up the whole rack. Soft, she's gonna be in trouble after this, drawing the cubo behind the five. Yeah, it's a question if she wants to play the two into the three, or is a small chance of making the three at that point, or if she can cut it to the right a little bit. Yeah, I was thinking maybe bank the two up to the eight seven, try to get behind this as well, and then run the cubo into the rail and out, sticking with the five. That's good shot. Hit it well. She hit it really good. I think she took away the top rail kick and the left. You see that the top short rail is blocked. Now the long rail in the top side of the screen is super tough, queuing maybe over the five and small angle. I mean, what else? This is the only shot she has, but it's not a. It's not my favorite. No, she got to play it with some left spin as well. It's tough to judge, especially cue ball so close to the rail. I like going three rails at this. Long rail, short rail, long rail. Catch either the left or the right side of the two, and tough to see that route. But I, I now that I now that you mention it, I, I like it. I don't think this is going to check enough. Clock is too many. A little bit further. Play extreme spin. She's she overdone it. it. Yeah, needs a rail. No rail and. No, sh I was going to say maybe she pushed the combo 5-9 a little better now, but still tough. Going for the 10, doesn't like the combo. I don't mind it because you know, navigating around the 7 would have been tough as well. Big shot here for Allen in the second set. Yeah, if she can get on the hill first. It's lined up pretty straight. 10's reasonably close enough to the corner pocket. Very missable because a lot of distance between the two and the ten. Just gotta feel her angle out as good as she can here. Distance between the two and the ten got her there. I don't mind the choice, you know, the rest of the rack no. was lying tough. 
No, also she went completely all in. She didn't play any safe or something. But then again, Pia's never gonna be out with this opportunity. Like it's just you knew beforehand, and especially where the temple ended up, it's even worse. Yeah. Well, if she makes a three and then cuts the five into the ten and bring the cue ball one reel, maybe two reels, and have the seven eight as a blocker, then you open the problem and still are in control. I think that's the best shot as long as she's able to hold the cue ball on the left side of the table. Oh, Not that hold for that shot. Yeah, it ran a little bit too far. What is she looking at? Is she gonna thin the left side of the five, bring the five behind the ten, and bring the nine ten in between? She was looking at, kind of seemed like she was looking at your shot, but it's very hard to get the cue ball going enough for the left off this angle. From this, I, I'm definitely skimming off the left side of the five. She it's tried hard. to spin it, but she didn't have that angle. She was trying to draw it over, and the speed she had to hit it at was never going to get enough draw. It's a big stroke shot that has to come here from Ayala. I feel like playing the five on the side, the cue ball's going to go too close to the top right corner. If she plays it in the side, you either have to play a lot of topspin to hopefully not scratch, or you could go really aggressive, play low left. And swing it around three rails, possibly four. Well, she beat the scratch. Oh, How's it gonna needs come another down bump. Table? Hey, wow, got a look at it. Oh, foul! What it happened there? Must Did she? Had to be a shot clock foul. It could have been an all foul over the over top of the nine ten. Which balls was she over there? Even I didn't feel like she was over any balls. No, shot clock foul maybe. And sorry, we don't have a replay on this table. Can't quite see it. Well, we know one thing, that foul could be very costly. It's a huge spot to match. Get straight on the seven to the side, all the balls are open. Okay, the nine doesn't have a full pocket. So, if the, oh, it does from this view, yeah, so. She got straight on the seven to the corner. Stop shot, they'll draw on the eight, it's. Stay composed is the only thing. Yeah. One thing I will concede for Ayala. Boy. Is she's shown very little emotion this whole match. Even after that foul, she kind of just went through a chair, accepted it, didn't wait for her next chance. Yeah, like I mentioned, it wasn't really much work unless you missed a seven or something. Crazy. Three, two. She's on the double hill, Pia Filler. Getting a little help here and there from Ayala. Had to be a close foul. Or, um, uh, pardon me, a shot clock foul. Yeah, I don't. I'm sure we're not going to find out. Philly's made a ball in her last two breaks. as well as possible. Hector Ramos, you mean it here, Hector? Mohamed, you mean it here?
White getting huge power into the rack, and it's hurting her overall. She's going to do well in these Predator Pro Series events. She's going to have to find a way to kind of create a little more power. Yeah. Yeah, you don't expect her to win an event with this style of break. Yeah. The overall break and run percentage isn't really high, but you know, being able to throw a break and run in here and there, it's a, it's a big thing in this format. And the other thing that, it, that happens too is that you're not able to gain momentum because you win a game and then you come up and just kind of surrender the break, right? So it's like you're never at the table for long periods of time, so it's tough to get into real solid gear. Still firing. Yeah, she got it. Played the 3 8 combo. Try to get something decent on the 3. Maybe a shot to open up the 4 9. If she does get too straight, she can opt to play the combo 4 9. Cool. Yeah, that was tricky to control. Kind of never. Caught never, a little bit thin. Yeah, never expected to get that much energy out of the three there. Just gonna have a typical kick safe here. Oh, I like kick safe hands. I guess if you draw it enough, you got a lot of coverage between the six seven below the six seven ten. Risky cue ball's close to the 10. Got to make sure you get over it here. Ooh, very close. Yeah, created distance. Possibly left the most difficult shot on the pool table. Yeah. Not just to make the ball, but usually when you have to bring the cue ball back down table, that's where this one is uh, not my favorite <laughs> at all. She's got to hit it with speed, too. I think I'm going to bank the three ball wide and bring it four rails down behind the 10-7. Top left. I'm not swinging on this. She went at it. Tough shot, though. Left it safe again. Similar angle, but this one's too hard to even play any kind of offense. Can lay the three in the middle of the short rail, but the cue ball's not really tracking back to it behind any of the balls at the racking end of the table. She's down pretty quick. She's got a, she has a thought here. She has to cut the three up to the short rail. She went aggressive. I I just don't feel she could get the cue ball out. I don't think so. Not without drawing it, which would have made the shot three times as tough. Maybe more. Yeah. I mean, drawing that was... Yeah, never mind, you would have to elevate. Now, if you were doubting to play the combo, just take the cue ball behind the nine. Yeah, I think it, it actually pockets in the bottom right here. So oh, yeah, th then you shoot. But if, you know, the combo could be a little strange, so. But now, if you play the safety, try to look at blocking, you know, like you're going to expect if you push the four next to the five, there is going to be a one railer. Try to so get it underneath of the five or do something more. Like, you know, this is just not strong enough. Yeah, try to line the four up with the five for sure. Or, or just get the four out and bring the cue ball perfect behind the nine, but not. The tricky part there is that she's under a shot clock, right? But th what she needs to try to develop is the ability to think quick, decide on one shot, see the shot quickly, and then give herself time to execute it. Like, you can see when she was on that third foul there, right? She's, it took her about 30 or 40 seconds to see the right shot, and then it was too long. And she didn't have enough time to. Oh, wow. <laughs> this, it actually hurt her. Nice shot. So like that, Ayala. Little magic there. Cue ball's lying decent to get back for the six as well. Bit of speed control here, but moving naturally. Played 
pretty much perfectly. Cue ball tracked in the right a little bit, which is what she wanted. Ideally getting straight on the seven with an option to maybe roll past the 10. Yeah, just soft stun follow, I guess, here. much angle see if it's playing around the 10 wow it's too much to even really slow it down yeah that's why you actually had to stun follow just a small bit straight on the seven yeah. now it's gonna run towards the 10 maybe run towards the nine do you have to draw to the nine here? or draw to the short side of the nine just shoot the nine in the bottom right big reach oh geez. yeah she's missed the seven Big turn of events at the end of it in this sixth rack here of the second set, but Filler's going to have the perfect chance to finish it off. Yeah, you don't have to. You you wouldn't expect Ayala to come back. There's no moving the cue ball around, and so two balls left to be a filler. Advance to the next round. It's a good match, a lot of moving. Good showcase of both players' skills. Look for Ayala to polish up just a little more, but I see her as a player that can get stronger going forward. She's still in the tournament. Yeah, yeah. enough to develop, for sure. Yeah. Filler will be moving on to the women's qualification match tomorrow. Oh, so there it is. Some pocket there. Okay, guys, for Tim DeRyder, this is Eric Korlefsen. I'll be back with you in a couple hours.